Saudi Arabia has sworn in a former media chief as its new ambassador to the United Arab Emirates. The appointment came just days after it was revealed that the new ambassador, Turk al-Dakhil, was privy to a conversation that was picked up by US intelligence in which the Saudi crown prince said he would use a bullet on slain journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Leela Jacinto from our internet desk joins us to discuss the story. Uh, Leela, you've of course been writing this story for our website. Fill us in on the background to this appointment. What are the links between this new Saudi ambassador to the UAE and to the Jamal Khashoggi uh, murder? Well, what happened was that last week the New York Times broke this explosive story that uh, the Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, also called MBS, in a private conversation uh, mentioned that he would put put a use a bullet on Jamal Khashoggi. This conversation happened in September 2017, uh, and it was picked up, as you said, by U.S. intelligence. But it was, you know, it was it was billed as the most uh, the most obvious evidence to date that the crown pr prince considered killing Khashoggi long before he was brutally slain in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. The person who was privy to this private increment incriminating conversation was Turki al-Dakil. Uh, he is the former general manager of Al Arabiya TV. It's a Saudi TV network. He's a fairly well-known TV anchor. He was once called the Larry King and Charlie Rose of the Middle East. And his, his columns defending the crown prince are pretty well-known. Now, Turki al-Dakhil, it must be said, has categorically denied the New York Times reports as false. But, you know, there are still clouds hanging over him. And, you know, given the Saudi inconsistencies uh, of the denial in the Khashoggi case. These clouds are not going anywhere. And despite this, and just days after the New York Times piece a, a story broke, Saudi Arabia confirmed Turki al-Dakil as the new envoy to the UAE. So what does this appointment reveal and what are the implications for both countries? It's very interesting. Well, on the one hand, it is very consistent with the Crown Prince's management style of rewarding loyalists and carrying out carrying on business as usual in the hope that this scandal will blow away, which is not happening. On the other, it also shows how he is controlling all the reins of power and keeping all the lever levers within the leadership. Uh, so in order to do that, it's sort of easier to get an outsider with no prior diplomatic experience. Uh, you know, if you have a very experienced diplomat, uh, it's just going to make life that much harder. It also talks about, you know, it also tells you the relationship between the UAE and Saudi Arabia. They are very close partners in the war in Yemen, in the, you know, on Qatar, as well as Iran. And the crown princes of Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia, and they are called MBZ and MBS, have a very close personal relationship. So, you know, bilateral relationships as well as policy is all being kept on a very top leadership level, not including people outside the royal circle. But more interestingly, on a personal level, you know, if you compare... Turki al-Dakhil and Jamal Khashoggi, it also gives you a mirror into the blurred lines between journalism and power in Saudi Arabia and how that can make a difference between murder and a promotion. Both these men were former journalists. They have both worked at some points in their lives in Saudi embassies. They are Saudi insiders. But that's where the similarities end. And that's where I'm going to end, because in order to read more, you've got to go and read the piece online. Indeed you do. And if you want to check out Leela's story on the new Saudi ambassador, you can, of course, head to our website, that being france24.com. And that's it for this edition.